we're seeing people who with no legal background can go on GPT or Gemini and start pitching their questions. One of the barriers with this sort of flood of AI, all information, legal information, databases, is that the client doesn't know what they're looking at and they may not know the language to ask what they're looking for. Think of medicine. So a generation ago, we had no digital medicine. And this is when I was beginning in the workforce in the 90s. Something came called uh, Medscape, 1995, I think it was, ended up being purchased by WebMD. People said that you're crazy. You cannot digitize medicine. You know, people will die. We have physical bodies. How do you do it in a digital format? They digitized a lot, beginning with records, um, but more importantly, uh, symptomologies, uh, diet, different things that go into your health. We now habitually, you and I, David, will access on the web. A lot of that is being AI enabled. And it's the same really with building a house, with doing a legal uh, engagement. You can take expert information and de deduce it, deduce it into a menu of things that people need. So it's incredibly transformative. And to see that it was done before with medicine to an extent digitized, I feel like this is now the era for law. Law is doing what Medscape did last generation. And now the benefit is we have AI, we have extremely accelerated tools. So it's very exciting. That sounds odd, kind of. If you thought of like all the timelines that we could be living in, and if you were like a betting man, would you expect like medicine to be the first thing that people start digitizing or would, you, would it be law? It's interesting to see that medicine was the canary and, and now a couple of decades later, it's, it's law. Does that surprise you at all or am I missing something? People care when it's the animal in their pen that's being harmed. If their neighbor's ox is getting attacked, well, that's important to them, but when it's in their own yard. And so I guess that's one metaphor. Another way to think about it is why medicine and not law? The medical industry regulates physicians and hospitals and medical treatment, which is geared at helping health, saving life. So it has a, a meta a meta purpose. It's a regulatory system that is for life and health. So people, the public can understand that meta purpose because we all live and we all die and we all want to be healthy. In the law, you're regulating regulators, right? The product of the law is the language which frees man or jails man, which makes man successful or more successful or hampers man. And so I think there's a whole lot more resistance to the legal industry adopting these things because obviously it opens the floodgates of competition to lawyers in a way that medicine does not. We can't do surgery, but we could do a contract. That makes sense. What parallels do you see between the early dot-com boom and the current wave of AI adoption? And for our entrepreneur audience, uh, what do you think they can learn from these historic cycles? My experience, David, is that the previous dot-com cycle had sort of a template. And I mentioned earlier, you know, you'd get to a certain level where you were either attractive as a company or attractive project or attractive team or friends in the right places. And then you would get your investment banker signing on with you and you're, okay, you're going to the moon. So everything was sort of institutional venture capital firms and things like Y Combinator have done a lot to level level out that. But fast forward to where we are in 2024, we have all there's such a plethora of tools and you know you could name several, but ChatGPT as we mentioned, the large LLMs, a person can use the tools almost for free and many of them free and build code, build a product. In the, literally, so the garage that we understood of the Silicon Valley, Hewlett Packard, they're tinkering in their garage, and then they made something great, and then they got money and they took off. The scope and the scale and the timeline of that creation has totally been shrunk 
and is basically instantaneous that you can create a widget today, pop it up on X or what have you, and it can take off immediately in an organic way. So it's less institutional. It's more instant. It's more exciting, I think, David. I'm certainly very excited about it because it enables the entrepreneurs who you ask about to chart their own destiny. What advice to entrepreneurs? Build something. What do I build? Build anything. It's quite amazing. I did a rap song, David, for instance. I'm not a rapper, you know, a guy lawyer, but I took, I just had a creative thought. Let's look at uh, fair use doctrine in copyright law. Copyright's very hot. So I got an LLM to summarize fair use doctrine and copyright law. I asked another LLM, take these words and translate them into rap lyrics. I asked an AI music creator to give me a soundtrack behind it and create a rap song. What's it worth? Nothing. But it's astonishing and an example. And I did it as an exemplar to others. If a lawyer can build a rap song in less than an hour, imagine what you can build. So it's an extremely liberating time with AI, in my opinion. With your experience moving between industries, geographies, and roles, what advice would you have for entrepreneurs and professionals looking to reinvent themselves in these times of uncertainty? Go back to the beginning. Life is how. Life is not what. We can be very literal as you know, we understand the world. What is my job title? What is my annual comp? We have to think more about how am I as a person? How do I talk to myself? What are the words and language and content that I feed myself? Because what I feed myself is what I'm going to give back out to the world. And so the over literalization or I have to copy others. They're doing this. I better do that. Find out what makes you unique and make the fullest expression of you that you can make in a positive way. And it's astonishing what can happen. So we make our goals. And then if we leave room open for what could be, it's amazing what can be when we work on ourselves and feed ourselves the best thoughts and work really hard and do the things that we thought we never could do make those very large goals. So that that's some general advice. Um, you just never know in life. <laughs> we think we know, but you just never know. That's really good advice, I think, in terms of like the, the mental diet or the consumption diet of uh, what you put in, books or videos or whatever, because that, that informs the way that you interpret your environment and the way that you spend your time. Good decisions can pay dividends, even though like in a, a freeze frame, maybe it doesn't seem like that much, but compounding over a few years, uh, you can be in a very different place than you, uh, from where you began. Your personal story includes profound resilience, such as navigating loss while continuing to build a career. How has your family shaped your outlook on seizing opportunity and overcoming challenges? These are the people that the universe put <laughs> with me, right? Call it God or call it the universe. So step one is getting beyond that self-centeredness, right? This, okay, that's my family and I provide for my family in kind of the literal pe pedantic way. All right, I do this. And then thinking instead that I'm the subject of this organism instead of the leader and the object of this organism. And I hope I'm not getting too out there, but you're asking me about close concepts with my family. The ability to see that each person is a universe of one, that each person is not, okay, they're going to do what I did. They're going to become a lawyer. This one's going to become a doctor. This one's going to do this. That's a universe of one. I didn't always have that conception, David. And, you know, I, I was kind of more, I guess you would consider old school father. I make the money and, you know, my wife does takes care of the kids and, you know, the kids are supposed to behave and yes, they are. And yes, she is. And yes, I am. But getting caught in that literalism and losing the scope of, wait a minute, one of these people is not like the rest of them. They're not like anyone else in the world. They will never recur. 
They were never here before. And so thought in those terms that God or the universe has entrusted me with these people, it's an unfathomable responsibility and humbling and privilege. And so I guess I had them in my life in separate buckets. I go over here to work and then I go over here with the family, but finding that integration of saying, okay, when I'm at work, I am serving them. I say, I'm employed by, my, I'm not self-employed. I'm employed by my family. I really am. And having that integration. So um, they changed my life in infinite ways, in surprising ways, as we know. And they're, they're the reason that I'm here instead of, okay, I'm, you know, I'm here, put here for them. I have to care for them. And yes, I do. But wait a minute, <laughs> I'm here with them. So I don't know if that was too vague. I'm sorry. No, it's really beautiful the way that you put that. You're not self-employed. You're employed by your family. I like that. Is there anything that you want to say about Project GIST and the experimental new, way, uh, new wave law bots that you're creating or anything regarding that project? Sure. I'll detail it for you real quick. It's two years in the making. A lot of traction this year, a lot of meetings uh, trying to find patrons. We have a new way of doing law. In effect, it will be selling law similar to how we buy Spotify songs. That's, that's the bottom line of it. We say that we turn law into thought. That's what just does. It's a one man company. It's me, but as I mentioned earlier, cannot do it without others. We can't, you know, if you want to go fast, go by yourself. You want to go far, go with others. So I have a board of five people who are, I'm just humbled that they uh, have agreed over this time, over la the last year in particular, to guide me, to work with me, to get my product market fit, all of the fundamentals from their experience. So I have a board of five. I have a back-end partner in Mumbai, of all places, uh, funnily enough. And uh, I'm seeking 10,000 lawyers and 10,000 developers. And we're not near that yet, but we do have a number of partners. Uh, anywhere in the world is my call out. If you're a lawyer and you want to get into AI, we have a way to do that for you. Um, if you're a developer and you want to build for AI and law, we have something for you to do as well. I write about all this stuff, David, on my Substack. Uh, we are creating small tools, not big databases. It's a very thought out methodology, and I believe it's going to be very winning going forward. Sounds promising. I, I'm intrigued. And where would you like to direct people? You mentioned your sub stack. Is there anywhere else that you'd like to point people to follow along with what you're doing? I like connecting on X. <laughs> I think that's how you and I met. X is a tremendous I think a one-of-a-kind forum for intellectual and business exchange. You can find me AI Council Dallas. Uh, so at AI Council Dallas on X. My Substack is AI Council .substack com. We are working on a new web website for GIST, which knock on wood, will be up this month, December 2024, uh, in connection with closing funding. Knock on wood. And basically, we're about to go uh, public with our tool. And if people are programmers or lawyers looking to get involved with Project GIST, should they just reach out to you on X? Find me on X. Send me a DM. My messages are open. Um, we can coordinate a brief meeting where I can hear what you're doing, share what I'm doing, and see if we want to work on a project together. Um, and I love that. And, you know, I only need 10,000, David. 10,000 developers and 10,000 lawyers. That's a small goal for now. Well, it was a real pleasure uh, speaking with you, Cyrus. Thank you for sharing a bit of your colorful um, story with us. That's a, uh, really impressive, even though it's only a couple decades, uh, a lot is packed in there. So that'll be useful for entrepreneurs across the board. David, thank you. It's a privilege to talk to you. I really appreciate the invitation. Mm -hmm.